Hi, I'm Dr. Seth Jenny, and today I would like to cover what is a literature review, what are the components of a literature review, some tips and strategies for writing a literature review, uh, and then also I want to provide you an example literature review. So I first want to go through this uh, great tip sheet from Edith Cohen University in Australia. And let's see what how they define a literature review. It may be a paper on its own or can be contained as an integral part of an article, research proposal, research report, or dissertation. So sometimes students will be asked to write a uh, a, a literature review all by itself. Sometimes um, if they're writing a thesis or dissertation, chapter one might be the uh, introduction, chapter two might be a literature review. If you're writing an academic paper, um, that whole introduction is an abbreviated literature review, which is, tends to be significantly shorter than a thesis or dissertation. So one of the th really important things I want you to grasp is you have to know what is the purpose of your literature review. What is your main purpose statement? Because all the literature that you are trying to find in dat journal databases and elsewhere in the library, uh, textbooks, whatever it might be, um, it needs to all hinge on what's the purpose of the review. What is the aim of your paper? And so what, you, what are you doing? You're describing, comparing, contrasting, and evaluating the major theories, arguments, the results, the methodologies, the approaches that were used to study what your topic is. Okay, You need to make sure that you have narrowed down what is the aim of your literature review. What are you trying to summarize? And make sure it's not overly general. Make sure that it is uh, clear enough and specific enough. Um, the one thing that I like here where it discusses is what is it not? Well, literature review is not an annotated bibliography where you're listing a citation and then you have a paragraph summary of, of that item. Um, a lot of times students will have a dichotomous literature review where they discuss one study then they move on to the next study, then they move on to the next study, and it's not a synthesis of the literature. You need to blend in and see where these past studies relate to each other and just um, uh, make those connections for the reader. Don't just assume that you're, you're just by putting next and um, then or uh, subsequently, those transition statements are not just tying all of those literature uh, uh, studies together, you need to do that um, easily for the reader. Um, it's not a summary of each source listed one by one, which is exactly what I just mentioned, and it's not a descriptive summary of the historical background of your topic. So uh, in a different video that you, um, I'll, I'll remember, try to remember to put in the uh, description, I discussed the differences between the primary, secondary, and tertiary sources. You want to focus your literature review on primary research. Those are empirically based studies that uh, involve data collection, involves a sample, uh, it involves first account information that was collected with results. Um, secondary sources are other reviews, which actually is a great place to start to learn information about your topic. Is um, you know if you're wanting to look at uh, a particular topic, you put your topic title and then put literature review or review of literature and re you can get to know your topic well from finding those um, reviews, but then the majority of your own literature review should be primary research. Uh, the next thing is, is um, the author here covers the five C's of writing a literature review. So number one, cite. Keep the primary focus of your literature and trying to cite these primary sources. Compare the various arguments, theories, methodologies, approaches, and findings. You can critique um, the studies. You know, If they have a very small sample size and you think that's important, then notate that. If you felt that there were some threats to validity on some of those um, studies where um, maybe the results weren't, um, weren't accurate, 
based upon some fallacies of the research design, then you might uh, discuss that. Um, next, contrast the various arguments, themes uh, within the literature. See where some of the results are opposite of the other um, studies that you find. Critique the literature. Look at the methods. Look at the uh, sampling. Uh, look at the results, the conclusions, the implications. And then connect the literature to your own topic. And remember, everything should be coming back to what's that purpose statement, what's that purpose of your review. And the structure would be an introduction. Typically at the end of the introduction uh, is where you're going to, the purpose of this review is. And then you're going to have the body where you're going to be examining the past research. And um, the other thing that... Uh, with that body, let's take a look down here, selecting appropriate sources. Make sure that they're relevant, they relate to your topic. Make sure that they are from sources that are reputable. You know, don't go on Wikipedia. Um, you need to go on uh, major journal database search engines. Um, Google Scholar tends to be okay, but use your academic institutions, um, journal library search, uh, so that we know that, it, you know, preferably peer-reviewed academic journals. Um, and then, uh, are they current? You know, is this 15, 20 years ago? Um, the goal is to try to have your citations within the last five years. I know that's not always possible, but that would be a great goal to have. And then coming back to up here, uh, having a conclusion, making sure it's very clear based upon the literature that you reported, the studies that you found, what is your overall conclusion on your research topic and, and your uh, purpose statement and your research question, and then reiterate those conclusions. And uh, you can always do a screenshot of, of this document, but um, it's a good idea to write that introduction and conclusion section last. And so here is an example of a literature review um, which I co-wrote with a few other authors in the Journal of Simulation and Gaming. The Effectiveness of Developing Motor Skills Through Motion-Based Video Gaming, a review. Let's scroll down. So this particular journal required us to um, separate out with subheadings the abstract, um, the aim. So this is more of an introduction of what is motion-based video gaming. Uh, and then the aim of the literature review reveals the current knowledge regarding the potential educational benefits of motion-based video gaming, MBVG, particularly in physical education and sport pedagogy settings, so sports teaching, developments of video gaming and education, as well as recent research regarding motion-based video gaming and its potential impact on physical skill development within educational environments are discussed. So that's almost a little bit of the significance of, of this um, paper, uh, of this review. And then the conclusions, motion-based video gaming, and we did not write this until the end after the review was completed, may be beneficial with novices in teaching basic sports concepts or with individuals with special needs who might otherwise not be able to participate in the full authentic version of the sport. However, empirical evidence is lacking which supports the effective use of motion-based video gaming in accurately teaching authentic sport-specific motor skills. So that's the conclusion. Uh, let's. Uh, here's the key words. Notice that we, uh, per APA, we try not to use any of the same key words which are in the title because when somebody is uh, doing a search for your paper, um, they're already going to find your paper through the title, so your, your keywords are going to be related words that aren't exactly in your title. title. Okay, so uh, I want you to pay attention to the subheadings in this review. First of all, it's going to start with an introduction. It's going to talk about uh, video gaming and the popularity of it and some statistics. Um, who's who's uh, playing video games, and it's going to move from general to specific. So we're going to generally talk about this topic of motion-based video gaming, but we're even not even going to talk about the extra gaming motion part of it. We're just going to talk about sedentary gaming first. Then we'll move it to specific. And so here's the introduction. 
I'm going down to the first subheading is video gaming and education because remember this is um, relating to our topic but it is still in the general uh, part of it. So here's sedentary, any type of gaming in education. So we cover what's the research relating to that. Then as another th level three subheading, the technology in physical education. So not necessarily video gaming, but technology and PE. Then we move into sport video games and learning. And some of these subheadings are going to just naturally occur based upon the types of articles that you find relating to your topic. So these are sport uh, video games such as FIFA and Madden and how um, people are learning sports concepts through playing sedentary sport video games. And now we're moving into video gaming and motivation in general. Motion-based video gaming in rehabilitation settings. So now we're getting closer to motor skill development where uh, people are using different types of motion-based video games for rehab. Then we're getting into the studies that focus on physical activity and caloric expenditure in motion-based video games. How many calories do you burn when you're playing extra games? Then we move into perceptions of motion-based video games, specifically um, in uh, physical education professionals. Now we've moved to the main body of our paper, which we're, we're at about um, six pages in, motor skill development through motion-based video gaming. And so we've set it up, and now we go through all the major um, papers that we have found relating to motion-based video gaming and motor skill development, which there aren't that many. And then we have our conclusion. Um, the purpose of this article was to provide an overview of sedentary and motion-based video gaming research and education, particularly regarding developing motor skills through motion-based video gaming. And so we uh, go through a summary of the results and what some of those implications are for the results, conflict of interest, funding, and then references. Those are all in, in APA. I think the one thing that I glossed over, and here's the author biographies, but um, I glossed over the purpose statement, which I told you not to do. So uh, I apologize for that. And let's go up. It should be um, toward the end of the introduction. So here it is. The end of the introduction. The purpose of this article is to provide a brief overview of video gaming in education, discuss the recent developments in motion-based video gaming research, and review the current literature regarding teaching motor skills through motion-based video gaming. And so that was at the end of the introduction before the first subheading is a common spot where you'll see the purpose statement. So hopefully that gives you a better idea of the way that you might want to structure a literature review. Um, move from general spe to specific. Make sure that you really focus on that purpose statement and you draw those um, sources that you find trying to focus on primary research articles to support that purpose statement. Start with that introduction. Finish it off with the purpose statement. Have the body with plenty of, of um, subheadings that relate to the articles and your topic and then finish with a conclusion that summarizes um, based upon the literature uh, what is the conclusion of your topic.